Yeah, now. Cool. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Prasad Adav. Um, hopefully, I don't bore you too much uh, since it's the last talk. Um, uh, today, I'll be presenting uh, some results from the CFDDM coupling of abrasive water jet cutting nozzle. Uh, for some of the developers, they have been looking at the progress of this project for a while, but uh, we have some nice results this time. So, some uh, the outline of the presentation is follows. We have a brief introduction and recap uh, of what we have done before. Then we have the case setup for the nozzle, and we'll see the results. Then uh, finally, some solid numbers for the performance of Precise, um, because this has been a question for last two years now. Uh, then some conclusions, work in progress, and future work. So let's start with the introduction. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce the extended discrete element methods um, so software. So it is basically simulating particles um, using discrete element methods. Um, basically, it simulates particle motions, uh, interaction between particles themselves, uh, forces, and torques acting on them. Uh, it also has a conversion, which is basically shrinking or expanding of particles due to chemical reactions. Uh, and obviously, it has chemical reactions and mass transfer, heat and mass transfer. Uh, the extension of the discrete element, uh, discrete element methods is the ad hoc coupling, which we call as direct coupling. Uh, we have coupling with OpenFoam, ESI, Org, and also Foam Extend for different applications because they provide some different things. And also, this is why we want to have the precise so that we have easier time coupling different versions of these things. Uh, we also have a direct FEM coupling, but it's uh, not so much in use uh, now using Diffpack. Uh, in terms of license and usage, uh, it is not available publicly, but uh, it is available on request uh, to Professor Bernard Peters and my colleague Xavier Besseron. So moving on to uh, introducing the abrasive water jet cutting nozzle. So basically, as the name suggests, uh, this uses a high-speed, uh, high-velocity water jet to propel abrasive particles to cut metals. Uh, this kind of application is especially used in uh, aerospace engineering because with this kind of cutting, you do not have thermal stresses after the cutting. Um, and as the name suggests, the abrasive particles not just cut the sheet metal itself, but it also damages the nozzle itself. And this is what uh, I'm interested in looking at. So this is just an example of what it can do. So, once again, yeah. So my research aim is to develop a multiphysics simulation environment. So I want to couple CFT, DM, and FEM, uh, and this will be used first of all for the current application, but also for different applications. Then, uh, as I said before, I want to evaluate the erosion inside the nozzle because of uh, the particles bombarding on the nozzle itself. Uh, this affects the life of the nozzle and the way, uh, the, the cutting quality and stuff. So this is quite interesting to do with simulation because it's very expensive and very unreasonable to do with experiments. So just to give um, a brief introduction, uh, can you see my mouse? Yes. So this is called a hopper. Uh, this thing is the mixing chamber, and the dark gray is what we call the nozzle or the focusing tube. And here is uh, a picture showing uh, the erosion of the focusing tube so uh, or the nozzle. So you can see it. it erodes quite a lot, and as it goes on eroding, the particle-laden flow characteristics changes, and so cutting is not consistent. So a recap on the CFD-DM momentum coupling. Uh, we also have the FEM uh, coupling, so, but for this talk, since we first want to focus on part of the coupling, we just uh, look at the CFD-DM coupling. So we modify the open form adapter to have volume coupling, and soon I believe uh, it will also be available 
uh, in the official adapters what we use. Uh, then from fluid we exchange physical properties like density, uh, viscosity, um, and flow conditions such as velocity and pressure gradients uh, to XTM. Then XTM uses this to calculate uh, buoyancy forces and drag forces on the particles. And it also uses this uh, information to compute the momentum source terms. So we have implicit and explicit uh, momentum source terms, which XTM then sends back to OpenFOAM, which are injected through FV options and FV models if it's now OpenFOAM 9. Um, Depending on, uh, so for this particular case, which is multi-phase, we use uh, implicit, uh, explicit uh, momentum source terms, but if it's uh, a bit single phase flow or something, we might also use porosity for the momentum exchange. So here is um, a, a brief picture of how we do the volume coupling. So basically, uh, discrete element methods are meshless methods. Uh, we just define a box uh, to say that within this box we want to simulate the particles. Uh, but to run these simulations in parallel, we do domain decomposition. So for this, we kind of create a mesh, air quotes. Um, and so whatever these boxes or cells you see are basically the domain decomposition of the uh, XTM domain. And the green dots that you see are basically the cell centers. And what we do is basically transfer data from open foam to these cell centers, then use it to compute things on the particles, and then again map the data from these cell centers to the CFD cell centers. Um, obviously here the boxes are very big because uh, I just wanted to show them nicely, but uh, they are quite small uh, in the simulation so that they are closer to the CFD cells or they're reasonable uh, inconsistent to the uh, CFD cells. And another good point to note is uh, the CFD uh, uh, mesh can be of any size, shape, and uh, size, because the major restriction on uh, traditional CFD DM coupling is that you cannot have CFD cells smaller than the particle size. Uh, but in with the precise coupling, we are able to have a CFD cell smaller than the particle size because it's just an independent CFD simulation and nothing to do with the particles as such. So let's uh, see the case setup and the results for the nozzle now. So this is the fluid domain uh, or the fluid mesh for the CFD. Um, we have a water jet inlet. Uh, the water jet comes in at 300 meters per second. And on the other side, we have the fluid outlet. On the top, uh, there is, um, it is open to air, so uh, some air can come in. And this is the same place where we inject the particles. Uh, the particle inlet, uh, the injection rate depends on the, so, uh, like, uh, the application, so it can be between one to 10 grams per second. Um, so especially simulation with uh, will be beneficial because, you know, depending on the particle in inflow rate, the characteristics inside the nozzle change a lot, which I'll be demonstrating later on in the presentation. Uh, this is basically here. Uh, this is an STL wall for XTM particles to know uh, where the nozzle wall is. But also when we include the FEM simulation, this will be used to exchange the data. But for now, this is just used as a wall for the particles. Now I want to show you some results where uh, I did not set up the fluid side quite nicely and uh, I messed up the uh, simulation. And so the fluid was very violent and turbulent and it was not behaving at, as it was supposed to be. But then from this, at least we can see how uh, my minutely it is influencing the particle motion. And it just um, throws them around because from the next slides, once we do get the simulations to run nicely and as they happen in real life, the particles at least entering through the hopper, this part are quite calm. So in this slide, uh, I want to bring your attention to how the particles accelerate due to the negative pressure inside the nozzle. 
because of the flow characteristics, there is a negative pressure uh, created inside the nozzle and then this pulls the particle from the hopper. So you can see here, the particles are accelerated because of this negative pressure. So this is the first uh, thing that we had to confirm that things are working properly. Now we'll see uh, just the interaction of the particles with the water jet, which is here in blue on, on the left side. It's just a slice of the fluid domain with, uh, denoting the velocity of the fluid. So we can see that uh, as the particles come in, uh, come in the path of the water jet, they are propelled through the nozzle or the focusing tube outside. And also due to the air flow inside the mixing chamber, which is this part, the particles keep on swirling and then keep on exiting through the focusing tube. So this is also something that uh, has been uh, uh, recorded in the literature as uh, like a typical flow inside the nozzle. And so we want, so it's called a mixing chamber because this mixing chamber will basically just swirl around the particles so that they don't bunch up at the entrance of this small uh, tube and choke up the flow. And so this mixing chamber uh, will direct the flow such that these particles swirl around. And so you can see that the particles keep on exiting um, as they come in contact with the water jet. And yeah, that should be it. In this slide now, I want to demonstrate. So we use uh, large eddy simulations for the turbulence modeling in, on the fluid side. So in this video, I want to show uh, that we are able to capture nicely all the turbulent uh, flow going inside the nozzle. And because of this turbulence, we have the expected flow. So one of the main, uh, so one of the things to observe is this eddy right here, and then this one right here, which is created at certain intervals, sorry for that. And so these eddies will then interact with the particles and we see that the particles are moving around uh, because of the even, even small um, fluid interactions. And um, so basically, um, we need this turbulence inside the mixing chamber again to just uh, keep the particles moving inside the mixing chamber so that they don't uh, just sit around at some part of the nozzle. Um, and then as you can see, they go and swirl around um, near this, this part of the nozzle and then exit as they come closer to the water jet. Um, also, another thing to note here is that as the simulation goes on, because of the presence of a lot of particles in the mixing chamber, the flow is modified slightly. Uh, so the particles were falling directly to the center and they later on they are shift a little bit towards the right. So this is basically the presence of particles influencing the overall fluid flow inside the nozzle. In this slide, uh, I want to show how the different operating conditions, so this is the same mass flow rate but different inlet velocities of the particle, particles, and the time is the same for both of them. So we have two minus two and one meters per second on the left and one minus one, 0 0.5 meters per, per second on the right. And so just because of this uh, difference of the inlet velocities, the way particles behave and the way the fluid behaves inside the nozzle changes quite a lot. And this basically influences where the erosion will occur. So if you can see on the right side, the particles are swirling around this region of the nozzle, whereas if you see here, they are mainly concentrated towards the front. So now uh, through these uh, simulations, we can then predict basically the erosion and then for we can change the 
in uh, the initial conditions of the simulation to know how the erosion is going to behave inside the nozzle. So that was all for the results and the videos. Um, let's uh, see some performance analysis of uh, precise coupling. So for this case, uh, I still have to do for the I still have to do the performance analysis for the abrasive water jet cutting nozzle because it's too big to run on a workstation, and uh, I've managed to get it to run on HPC just in past few weeks, and I'm still uh, man trying to get things to run properly. Uh, so once I'm able to do that, I'll share those uh, results as well. But for this case, uh, we have a rotating drum which has gravel uh, and water in it. So we still use interfoam. The physics is kind of similar. Uh, but basically, since we have a big enough case which we can compare for performance, we select this case. We only compare the CFD DM uh, cases because XTM does not have a six-way coupling, direct coupling between CFD and DM. It just has two-way coupling between CFD DM or DM and FEM. So we'll be only sticking to CFD DM uh, results. So obviously, um, we have identical case setup and is the same machine. Um, and uh, here are some numbers. So generally, to just point out, uh, for this particular case, precise coupling is 21% faster than the legacy coupling or the direct coupling. So here we have 125,000 particles and 12,000 CFD cells and 12,800 uh, XTM cells. So here you can see we have like a rotating drum with particles uh, just going around and we keep on adding water. So this particular case is for uh, the landslide simulation thing. Uh, so this was quite nice to finally know. Um, um, and um, we also did some performance analysis for the heat and mass transfer case as well. But depending on what we are exchanging and what we are doing, uh, the performance varies a little bit, but it's always better than the direct coupling. So coming towards the conclusion uh, of the presentation, so we have a nice particle laden flow characteristics, which is uh, what we expect from the literature. Uh, and so we are able to now proceed with uh, the estimation of the erosion. And uh, yeah, we, we are getting closer to the, to the target. Uh, already I'm able to simulate uh, different conditions and see different flow uh, characteristics inside the nozzle. Uh, this is also something very important because uh, after the proof of concept is done, uh, this can be uh, used as a design suggestion or a design feedback uh, when designing the nozzles in the future. So something work in progress is running the simulations on HPC um, and then getting the performance, uh, still figuring out how to run each participant on multiple nodes. Um, so open for, currently I just run open form on one node and then XTM on one node, but I still need to figure out how to run because it's still not enough to run it on one one node. Um, we need more resources. Then do of course the performance analysis for the nozzle case itself. Uh, this will be interesting because we have um, thousands of particles coming in, uh, the fluid domain is also changing and then we'll also have FEM at some point. So this will be interesting to know. And something for the users and also for the precise developers is that uh, after also, yeah, now I know where to add this. We plan to add a tutorial case with the XTM binaries uh, to community projects so that if somebody wants to use it and to see, they can uh, have a look. And that's it for my talk. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, I'm <coughs> and uh, we have some nice 3D results of the nozzle on the website if you want to have a look. Um, yeah, just a snapshot, yeah. All right, thanks a lot for the nice talk. Um,
Maybe I would like to start with the first question. Yeah. How do you actually validate these nozzle particle cases? Or do you have any chance to validate them with experimental data? Yes, uh, so first, um, for example, to answer the experimental data part, we have, uh, so there has been somebody who has d uh, performed uh, experiments. They put two accelerometers, so we have deformations on the nozzle itself. So once we have the six-way coupling, and we will put two probes on the simulation side and then directly compare the displacements at the locations. And as for the numerical side as well, uh, there has been uh, some studies which uh, predict uh, the erosion patterns inside the nozzle, and then they are compared with the actual nozzles, uh, and they just see if the same amount of mass is lost or the patterns are same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, are there further questions? Yes. Do you know why the precise Uh, so I can answer this partially. For example, um, first of all, the basic thing was the data was exchanged or accessed from the files. Uh, so you are writing a file and then you are using this thing. Um, and uh, in general, this um, how do you say this uh, framework is developed to do the coupling or to perform a certain application, but not to have, obviously XDM itself is uh, nicely, parallel, uh, nicely optimized and stuff, but the optimization of the coupling is not that good as precise, let's say. All right, further questions? Benjamin? Yeah. So for your performance results, yeah. um, did I get this correctly, you ran both codes in serial? Uh, no, so I, I ran both of them, uh, OpenFoam in MPI and then XTM with OMP. Um, How many? <laughs> so 20 MPI for Fluid and 20 for XTM, because it's a workstation, so <laughs> yeah. Did you do a serial coupling? So this is, uh, this is parallel explicit. For serial it was 17 or 16 something. Uh, we do plan to publish at some point, and then we can have uh, like a detail. But it was still better, uh, yeah. Parallel coming, do you know how, uh, how much load imbalance there is? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, this was just uh, initial exploration, just to know how much we are gaining, and so like how much we should uh, invest into it. And so finally, we have the number, and then yeah, we know now we need to uh, invest more time into yeah improving overall all the things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll, well, maybe I'll talk to Zavi and get back about the load imbalance because I'm not the right person to answer that question. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Sorry? What kind of mapping are you using in your precise So uh, I'm using uh, nearest projection and nearest neighbor. Uh, I have to open up the configuration file to now exactly know which is which. But it's uh, nearest neighbor, nearest projection now. But we'll also like to try out now RBF, because now I found out you can use nicely RBF with volume coupling, because it was not recommended a year or two ago. And also linear. Um, Cell interpolation. Yeah, yeah, linear center interpolation, yeah. So we will like to try out because this is just something that was working, so we did not change. So now we can try out different uh, things. Uh, so we are changing from uh, the data from both ways, the part of how we influencing the flow and Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. The particles can very fast with the water jet, right? Yeah. So you're uh, also, is that like grinding away material or is that like a brace of chipping? Pieces away from it? Now are you modeling that with that? Um, so for, for in terms of um, erosion itself, uh, we do not plan to yet uh, model the erosion itself 
during the simulation, for example. So we have all this data, so we have the impact forces. So the impact forces will give us the grinding and chipping, uh, and also the where this is happening and how much. And then we use the models to predict how much uh, erosion has happened, and then modify the FEM geometry in the future, and then uh, run a simulation. So we have experimental data before the erosion and after the erosion, and this is how we plan to compare the displacement results. Yeah. yeah. Further questions? Yeah. Yeah. Right about the future. It looks like it's like a periodic erosion. Yeah. Uh, like it starts to a road and then it's essentially redirecting and then. Yeah, so, so the, flow, the flow keeps on changing because of the, there are erosion concentrations and then as these erosion concentrations keep on developing, they influence the flow and then they keep on moving the thing, yeah. And traveling down. Yeah, yeah. Further questions? Yeah. If not, then I would say uh, thanks again for the nice Thank talk. You. Thank you for your attention.